Welcome to the JC Ashenine Stadium for this uh, Manning Cup matchup between Jamaica College and Eltham High here on the home of champions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the two teams for the It's the return leg. Jamaica College. Of course, Jamaica College would have uh, already gone of three goals uh, to the good against Eltham. And uh, the defending champions uh, face off once more with a former champion of the Water Cup. Jamaica College are trying to stand their class and make it to another quarterfinal. Of course, they already have uh, most of the work done. And can they continue on uh, this trajectory of uh, fervent soccer dominance at the schoolboy level? Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. The officials and the players on the field as they pause for the national anthem of Jamaica. My, my, the national anthem of Jamaica as the players uh, greet each other Eltham in uh, the maroon and white Jamaica College uh, in uh, their traditional blue strips royal and a navy blue and here are the officials uh, Romario Franson, Kenny Wright, Richton Archer, and the fourth official, Adet Hamilton. Here's a look at the Jamaica College's starting lineup. In goal, they have Roel Renton, Javon Mills, Dylan John, Amarley King, Javari Howell, Tahir Lawrence, JD Johnson, Renson Sayers, Jamoy Dennis, Malachi Sterling, and Tariq Jones. They're coached by Davian Ferguson. Here's the lineup for Eltham High School. Their coach, Joshua Atkinson, Kejon Clark, Antoine McDonald, Kevin Clark. Uh, they are twins, Kejon and Kevin. Javon Grant, Daniel Reed, Santana Headley, Stephen Bull, Rashawn Linton, and Nikki Murphy, Jamar Powis. They're coached by Gregory Allen. perspective definitely Stephen Bull there number 11 12 goal man so far this season and Javon Grant who wears the number seven four goals and ten assists but lots of work for them to do against this Jamaica College team that already lead by three goals such a deep and, and strong squad Jamaica College and Dylan John the man who's been around for a few seasons now 14 goals and four assists the JC number seven he certainly is their main player Davian Ferguson Assistant coach at Mount Pleasant in the Jamaica Premier League as well. Who have, who are coming off of that title. Lots further experience for him. I'm sure it has only helped him here at JC. And they continue their dominance in schoolboy football, Jamaica College, and especially the Manning Cup. Gregory Allen there looking on the coach for Eltham. Let's see how they can recover from that deficit if they can. So it's Eltham and the Jamaica College. Mario Francis, the man with the whistle. Hey, 
Adi, Adi. Remember, ball over, it's a fresh. Gotham with the kickoff. And the early pressure from Jamaica College. Gets them winning the ball in the middle of the park. Dylan John now with it. Spreading it forward. And the offside flag was up. Head coach Davian Ferguson, of course, in his first season as head coach would have won a Manning Cup title with Jamaica College. That's in 2019. Not many coaches have such a baptism into greatness. Of course, he's still a young coach in his 30s. Two Manning Cup titles to his credit so far, Champions Cup as well, and being a part of the Mount Pleasant team, as you mentioned, Chris, winning the Jamaica Premier League. It's happening young for him. For the first time, Mount Pleasant, after being around from 2016, there's Gregory Allen trying to get Eltham back to the levels that they were at in 2006. In a, in a good period for the St. Catherine-based Manning Cup teams, if you think about it. They were just one of quite a few that did good things. Bridgeport as well. In during that period, Eltham, as we said, and yeah, he, had, he had schools emerging in that time, schools like Innswood and, and, and Waterford, who also caused a lot of problems. And of course, yeah, Bridgeport, of course, we know would have won a couple of titles in the... In Manning, that year? Yeah. 2006? That, yeah, that Manning Cup year. It was an all a St. Catherine affair with Eltham and Bridgeport winning the trophies. Amara Francis there. Number nine. Calling back the play. Health, I'm not particularly happy with that. I mean, Jamaica College, but strong challenge that from Kevin Clark, one of two twins. Jamoy Dennis on the screen. It's Captain Renson Sawyers. Jabari Howell. Possession to Eltham. Able to break now, but they unable to keep possession of the ball. Looked to have been Jamar Powis who made the assist. The pass rather. Got a stern look from Chris Taylor. <laughs> Chris Malachi Sterling. To the future. <laughs> ball in. That should have been a goal, you know. It really should have been. That should have been finished. A real opportunity there for Johnson. A seven-goal man this season. Jay Johnson. Jaden Johnson. But yeah, should have done better there. Wow. Help them they breathe a sigh of relief. Let's see what they can do with that. Interesting updates coming in. Kingston College now lead champion by four goals to one. Which would mean... 7-3 on, on aggregate. aggregate. I would safe to say that 
Casey are through to the quarterfinal round. BB Cope now lead Manchester High by two goals to one. Manchester pulling one back. 3-1 now, in fact, we're, we're seeing half time. So good work by BB Coke out of St. Elizabeth. 3-1 they lead. It's a big match for them. That would be two and two for BB Coke. Yeah. Manchester who won their first game. That'll be a dent in their hopes of going forward. Only two to come out of that group. Four groups of four, the top two to come through in the Costa Cup. Certainly all wouldn't be lost for Manchester. Froome is playing against Gavi Maceo. It's locked at nil all in the first half. Glenmuir against Port Antonio. I haven't heard anything about that just yet. Here's Alta. Trying to go from distance. What I can tell you is that McGrath lead William Nib by three goals to one. And that would be a big dent in the hopes of Dwight Jeremiah's William Nib, who lost their first match as well by the odd goal in five. And now trailing 3 1 against a McGrath unit who we've seen already this season look a pretty good unit. And Jermaine Thomas doing really good things with them. You remember, he was around in 2019 when they got to the semi finals of the De Costa Cup. And it looks to me like this team could be looking to match that kind of team. They do have quality in it all around the park. Here's the Jamaica College. Ball to John. John gets by one. Crucial intervention that. That's Kevin Clark. Gonna be a, a bit difficult to track both himself and Kevin Clark. Not sure if that was ending in the back of the net or would it have been a pass? I think it was a pass inside. Looking for Johnson again. Good work though by Eltham. Good defending. Here's a corner kick lifted high. And the keeper got a hand to it. To make a college through Howell. Trying to capitalize. Of course, the big matchup yet to come in the Da Costa Cup. Clarendon College and Stets. Group one of the round of 16. Big group. Cornwall College, of course, being a part of that. Certainly from a historical level, these schools have so many titles between them. Cornwall, Clarendon College, Stets. Numerous titles, both at the Ben Francis level and the Da Costa Cup proper. Perhaps more as more so at the Da Costa Cup. So tradition certainly a plenty in group one. Here's Elton. Malachi Sterling shielding the ball, doing well. Here's Jamaica College. Ball released. Well, John wasn't there to get that one. Jones on the ball for Jamaica College. Because the way of Sterling. comes in good defensive work from Eltham to avert the danger the passes out of their own area have been panicky to say the least
this game starting just like what we saw in the first game where the team leading has been applying all the pressure continuing their dominance yes Jamaica College haven't scored yet but it seems so far like it's just a matter of time 4-4-2 four, four, is what they're playing JC Eltham a 4-3-3 three, three. at the moment it almost seems 11-0 <laughs> <laughs> everybody back there's a cross cut out again King was trying to get on the end of that for Jamaica College played out but still in the Eltham half they have a throw in now through Javine Mills or Javon Mills rather doing well there just to shield the ball from Rashawn Linton passes it to Tahir Lawrence Linton trying to apply some pressure on Jamaica College's defense they play out of the press easily in the end this ball now to Dennis Johnson his shot was wide of the mark Lawrence connects with Sterling for Jamaica College thrown in their own half is Dennis to John John is hustled off the ball Dennis gets the return ball Howell now chooses to recycle Sayers so the incension captain of this team Sayers that cross count and then booted out Eltham doing all defending so far. Really nothing going forward. This ball launched upfield. And again, it will give Jamaica College an easy opportunity to clear. And yeah, a chance for them to build yet again, finding the gaps in the midfield. Kevin Clark there. Showing a car to Jamoy. Uh, well, the referee there, Romara Francis, showing a, a Clark to Jamoy Dennis for that foul on Kevin Clark. Oh, Oof. that was an awful challenge. Yeah, really was. Wow. Yeah. Lucky there, that could have been another color. Dangerous. 
I think after he went in, did try to pull out, but it was too late by that time, Dennis. Jamaica College coming out of Group B. Won that group, nine wins from ten, just one loss, which was against Tivoli Gardens. They actually won that match in, in, in normal time, but then lost the points because of, of using an ineligible player. So that the one loss against them from their 10 games, they scored 52 and conceded just seven Jamaica College. Same Tivoli ended up coming second in that group. And Kingston Technical also making it through as a best third place team in that group. So pretty good results coming from that group. Eltham, another third place team. They came third behind Haley Selassie and Jonathan Grant. So seeing two teams out of zone C. Jonathan Grant dismantled by Mona. And well, JC have had things all their way against this Eltham team so far, which had six wins from ten matches, just like Jonathan Grant. But they only had one draw and had three losses, did Eltham. Here's Jamaica College trying to keep possession of the ball from side to side and draw the Eltham defenders out of position opening gaps Jones finds Sterling his ball was incisive but control was lacking Eltham there is happy just to get it out of their half not generally a pattern of play you're seeing from Eltham Apart from punting it long or just ensuring it goes out for a throw in. Shot from distance. It really was giving some problems for the goalkeeper, Raul Renton. Shot came from Javon Grant, the four goal 10 assist man. That would have been spectacular had it gone in. Ball to the top. John Clark there playing it out for a throw in can have perhaps more time than he thought he had Dennis Jamari Howell gets the ball his cross broken up Eltham now able to break. Goalkeeper coming forward. He's under some amount of pressure. Does well to shield off Rashawn Linton. Here's Eltham once more. Jamar Powis from distance. Some distance away from the goal as well. Here's Dennis. Manages to get it across, but handled in the end by the Eltham defense. Here's Dylan John.
ball out of touch for a throw in for Altham High. Confirms that. Not sure what the decision or the process in the mind of the referee. Yeah, it wasn't far away, was it? The thunder within 30 seconds, and I think the referee, as he stopped play, he's looking to Adet Hamilton. Interesting. It is generally the 30 30 rule, as you said. When you see the lightning flash, you count 30 seconds. Or you start counting. If it's within 30 seconds, in terms of when you hear the thunder, then you're supposed to leave the area. I guess it would be the fourth official monitor in that. We've already had some incidents this season which we don't want to any repeats. Certainly. Clark doing well to read that one. Chance run was mistimed. To make a call, it's still in possession. Really been dominant. His first touch let him down. Possession now with Bull for El Thumb. Jamar Powers there was manhandled by Tariq Jones. Here's a free kick directly to Renton in the goal for Jamaica College. So, of course, the BB Coke versus Manchester High matchup. That's on scene, TV, and on YouTube. Confirmation of the score there. Three goals to one. BB Coke. In full command. Yeah. It's on Sports Max YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, technology at its best. And look at that. Look at look at the population there at that stadium. There's more there than here, of course. I guess many might think that this game is a bit one-sided going into the fixture. a good time to remind you to download the Sportsmax app. Get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store. Watch all the happenings of Asa Schoolboy football in Jamaica, SSFL in Trinidad and Tobago for free and Sportsmax Plus. Plus, there's so much more sporting content on the Sportsmax app. Like this play, Jamaica College through on goal with a shot. Poor in the end. I think he was challenged from behind, you know, Johnson. I would love to see that again. I'm not so sure how much he kicked that ball. <laughs> yes, he's asking the referee. He's saying, referee, what's that? Look at when he goes to kick this. The, what, the first touch was wonderful from Johnson. He was clipped in. But, yeah. Have to see I don't from think another that, that was angle. a penalty. But he was clipped, which is why his foot couldn't go through 
with a shot properly. Here's Eltham. Yeah, the panicky nature of their play demonstrated in that particular sequence. Without much pressure, they're just happy to let the ball fly from wherever they are. Dylan John. So in other second round matches up mat matchups in the Manning Cup. Of course, St. Catherine already had a 2-0 advantage over Woolmers going into the second leg of their encounter. 1-0 now on the day. So it's 3-0 plus an away goal. There's a shot from distance. Tariq Jones there trying to get on the score sheet early for Jamaica College. Here's Jamaica College, Amari King. Dennis, tackled up by Kevin Clark. Doesn't like the call, it's a throw in. Thought he did enough to get it off. Dennis, but not so, says the assistant referee. Here's Jones, gets it across, but that is cleared by Altham. Comes the way of Howell who plays it is Captain Sears. So on the Dacosta Cup, I think it's group three. Glenmuir opening scoring against Port Antonio. Of course, Glenmuir would have drawn with Garvey Maceo, who now play Froome. So Glenmuir getting the lead against Port Antonio, trusting both of those coaches from the parish of Manchester. Both would have been influenced by Barry Watson, the current coach of Mile Gully. With current and past. Yeah. Froome and Garvey locked at nil all. Another one of those games in the Manning Cup, St. George's nil, St. Jago nil. In round of 16 action, St. Jago lead by is it St. George's lead by two St. goals. St. George's, sorry, lead by two no, two goals to nil in that fixture on aggregate. Make a college happy to let the ball do the work. It's a shot from distance. This is a good block. He's been knocked out of his socks. Down on the ground now, the defender who is to be Antoine McDonald. We got confirmation of that. Still on the ground. Yeah, that would have been hard for anyone to handle. Shot from Jones, had some fury to it. Here's another look. Got in harm's way. Gregory Allen, happy to have the break to give some instructions to his attacking lineup. Javon Grant, of course, being a part of that Stephen Bull, 12 gold man. Perhaps asking them to be a bit more calm. Mari King, on the other hand, getting a period of tuition from Ferguson of Jamaica College.
it was actually Daniel Reed who took that blow to the head. Returns to the field of play now, but Jamaica College in possession in this the 30th minute of play. Here's Jones, spreads it for Dennis, who now finds Powell, gets the return ball from Powell. Dennis gets it across. And Kejon Clark was there on hand to play that out. As Dylan John was ready to pounce. So in Catherine High, turning on the stars on Wilmers. 2 0 up now at the Michael University College. What a feel they have. I'll tell you what, Chris Taylor actually did a demo there, submitted it to Sportsmax. That was last year at Michael. So that venue is definitely dear to my heart. <laughs> Stephen Bull now on the ball. Foil them. Doesn't have a lot of outlets. Perhaps doesn't have any at the moment. Plays it out for a Jamaica College throw in. They're really sitting deep. Here they break though, Jamaica College. News coming in, St. Jago are down to 10 players against St. George's, even though they're locked at nil all. So they have their work cut out for them. Of course, St. George's lead that tie by two goals to nil. Tin Till, nil, Christiana nil. That's an interesting match there, you know. Christiana coming off a 3-2 win against William Nib. Here's a shot from distance. Yeah, that's a big match. And of course, do remember Dintil and McGrath played out a, a draw in the first match. So Dintil definitely needing a win. McGrath on their way to their first win of the group, leading 3 1 against William Nib. So William Nib, if they do lose two in a row, very much a chance of them being out. after them making back-to-back -back quarter final appearances in the Da Costa Cup. Now maybe falling short at the round of 16. Here at the JC Amsterdam Stadium, Jamaica College still nil all with Eltham. John gets the return ball, gets the cross, but Unable to get any JC player to put it in the back of the net. to keep at bay Jamaica College. Catch on Clark for the throw. That ball is... 
good for Jamaica College. Has to bring it back. Dylan John tries to get in the area. Gets it across. Howell on the end of it. Gets it across. And the fire from Amari King is a neat finish to an excellent build-up play for Jamaica College. Amari King converting in the 36th minute. Jamaica College 4-0 on aggregate. Now 1-0 on the afternoon. Just a matter of time for JC. Great work by Dylan John on the left-hand side just to create the space. Then the flighted delivery to the back post and an assist for Jabari Howell. Just look at this from John. That was intelligent. Didn't try to take an extra touch, did Howell. And the finish, the finish was magnificent from Amali King, who adds his seventh of the season. And Jabari Howell picking up his fifth assist. Intelligent play just to cushion the pass with the right foot. And King did the rest. So in group one, Cornwall College leading Malgully. Goal to nil. That's in the, the Costa Cup. Here come Dennis for Jamaica College. Effectively handled, but only back to Dennis. Turns inside and fires. It was a good shot, you know. And the follow-up was good. Johnson adds a second within a minute for Jamaica College. And they're turning on the styles now. No real emotion from Davian Ferguson. He's been pretty comfortable. His team has been comfortable. And they have been on the front foot for the entire 37 minutes. Jaden Johnson with eight on the season. Now. And yeah. Just like that, adding distance, putting further distance between themselves and Eltham. Good shot, which was on target, parried by the keeper. Yeah, the shot coming in from Dennis there. And it was a good save initially, but then the follow up, comfortable from Johnson. Sharing the goals, sharing the wins, sharing the excitement. Very big matchup between Haile Selassie and Tivoli Gardens. Love to get updates on that one. Last score we heard was a nil all. If that score line remains, they'll go directly to penalties. Because the first leg was nil all as yes. well, wasn't it? Yeah. Neither team able to break it, break each other down. A repeat of the walk of final last season. Linval Dixon still at the helm of Haley Selassie. Christopher Nicholas is opposite number at Tivoli Gardens. Here's Howell. Stripped of possession there. Tries to regain it, but Eltham doing well just to avert any danger. Two former. Big Premier League players and national reps, different generations though. <laughs> Here's Dylan John for Jamaica College. Gets it in the area now. Yeah, gets it across. Just off the upright. It to have been Johnson again. It was Johnson trying to get his second on the afternoon. Yeah, that should have been finished. Lovely play by John and company on that left-hand side yet again. Just playing the nice, nicely weighted passes through the middle. Yeah. And the wind further hit out of the sails of Eltham. Update, Cornwall College, the 12-time champions have scored against Mile Gully. 
They lead by a goal to nil. Of course, Cornwall College did lose to St. Elizabeth Technical in their first match, so a needed win for them. Mile Gully lost against Clarendon College, so they're in trouble, they're in trouble of going out early as well. Still in the all at half time between Frome and Garvey Maceo. St. Catherine still leading Woolmers by two goals to nil, four nil on aggregates. Glenn Muir continue to lead Port Antonio by a goal to nil. And we've had no further update from BB Coke and Manchester. Still 3 1 to BB Coke against Manchester. Here's Jamaica College through John. Marley King on the end of this one. That flashed wide off the upright. Looking for a second of the afternoon of Marley King. Time winding down in this the first half. So another flash of lightning there in the environs. Not sure who's counting, but my mind can't get to the counting just yet. Safe to say 30 seconds would have gone now. Right at 30. Here's Dennis. Clark doing well there. Which would mean it's going further away, which is a good sign. The first flash we saw was certainly within 30. So the fact that it's between, say, 30 and 35 seconds now, hopefully it means that you know, well, it is further away and hopefully it continues on that trajectory. And then the rain has started as well, drizzles, so you can see the fans in the stands moving away, uncovered, as we'd call it, the bleachers. Jamaica College using the ball well. And the pressure from Heltham, but breaking the line of press. Spreading it forward now. He was offside, was Dennis. Sterling for Jamaica College. Sayers, the captain, plays it up to Jabari Howell.
corner kick for Jamaica College. Lifted in the area, the goalkeeper had to come. Didn't handle it well. Mills. Goalkeeper is down. Just right, Aitkinson. Two minutes of time, two minutes of added time. Here's Sayers. Malachi Sterling. They're really just at a saunter now, Jamaica College. The spirit certainly of Elton has been broken. Sitting deep and not really playing football there. Just trying to avoid goals being conceded. Here's a header on. It was over the top from Dennis. Increased intensity in the Rain here, Jamaica College. Plain surface. Certainly not the best when it's wet. And referee Romario Francis has seen enough of the first half. A half that Eltham were trying to hold out Jamaica College, but eventually the pressure mounted. And they were able to break them down to Jamaica College. A goal from Marley King and uh, Jaden Johnson sees them 2 0 up at the half. 5 0 up on aggregate. Confirmation of the score at the half Jamaica College 2, Elton High School 0. Welcome back to the Ashenine Stadium on the grounds of Jamaica College. It's Issa Manning Cup football powered by Digicel and the host JC lead Eltham High by two goals to nil at the end of the first half.
Jamaica College in their full blue had chances early Johnson should have done better with that header there but they continued to put their foot down on the accelerator pressure in the defense line of Eltham High who really didn't have much going forward this an ambitious attempt from way out comfortably over the bar in the end uh, yeah goalkeeper Renton just watched it go over collected that one easily as well but that were the only moments for Eltham High. JC driving forward. This strike just wide of the upright. Wonderful opportunity for Jones. And just couldn't make it count. Jones from the Mount Pleasant Academy. And York Castle as well previously. This was the first goal. And great technique that was from the man Amali King. His seventh of the season. Cushioned pass by Howell who picks up yet another assist. His fifth. And that finish, exquisite. The pace of it, no match for, for, for the goalkeeper, Aitchison, between the sticks for Eltham. Then they continue to come forward. They'll get a second. Aitchison not doing best with that. It was a powerful strike, but pushing it right back into the danger zone. And Johnson this time was clinical. Not the cleanest finish by Johnson either, but they all count. And it was eight on the season for Jaden Johnson just sneaking into the far corner. 2 0 JC. Two goals within a minute. Nothing on target yet for Eltham from there. And just one attempt. Two on target from JC. And it's two goals from their 14 attempts. They could do with better accuracy, to be honest. They have enjoyed majority of the possession at 70%. They have had one corner as well. And they have been called offside twice. But after 45 minutes, the defending champions, JC, are on their way to the quarterfinals. They lead Eltham High by two goals to nil. We go to a break. When we come back, second half action in this Manning Cup round of 16. JPL on Sportsmax 2, Lime Hall versus Waterhouse, live Sunday, 1 p.m. 2 in the rest of the Caribbean. And in the second of the double header, Mount Pleasant versus Dunbeholden, Sunday, 3.15 p.m., 4.15 in the rest of the Caribbean on Sportsmax 2. La Liga on Sportsmax 2, Las Palmas versus Atletico Madrid, Friday, 3 p.m., 4 in the rest of the Caribbean. Real Betis, Mallorca, Saturday, 10.15 a.m., 11 in the Eastern Caribbean. That's on Sportsmax 2 as well. And Celta Vigo and Sevilla. They do battle Saturday, 12.30 p.m., 1.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. Real Sociedad, Barcelona, 3 p.m., 4 in the rest of the Caribbean. All of those matches on Sportsmax 2. La Liga lives on your home of champions. So we're back at the JC Ashenheim Stadium. Second round Manning Cup action between Jamaica College and Eltham High. So let's see the permutations for quart the quarterfinal group one. St. Andrew Technical High School and Kingston Technical. Well, of course, St. Andrew Technical have a sizable advantage going into today's matchup. They should be Kingston Technical. Mon already through having demolished Jonathan Grant 10-1 on aggregate. 
safe to say Kingston College beat Campion, of course, yeah. 7-3 on aggregate, the last score we had. And Woolmers out of the contention at the moment. Certainly by their way goals rule, it will go against them as well. St. Catherine leading by four goals to nil. And they should join them in quarterfinal group one. JC in charge here, six goals to the good for them on aggregate. St. George's four goal ahead of St. Jago on aggregate. Still nil all between Haile Selassie and Tivoli Gardens. That seems as if it's headed to penalties. Excelsior and Heidel also nil all. And uh, we'll get some more updates on that in the Da Costa Cup. Three minutes left in regular time. BB Coke still leading. Manchester High, three goals to two. Glenn Muir, of course, leading Port Antonio, four goals to nil. Yeah, so those are some of the scores we're getting. So the referee is getting back on the field. Mario Francis and his assistants. So there is a slight drizzle here at Jamaica College. Many of the fans, they have now drawn out their parasols. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, Chris Taylor. <laughs> their umbrellas. Jamaica College already on the field of play. Eltham trying to get warm. He's a brave soldier without any umbrella. Interesting that not a lot of students on hand for this match even before the rain started on their home ground Jamaica College not the kind of support I would have expected from the defending champions and from a school that has a rich tradition in football of course they are students but not at the magnitude that I would have expected from a sporting powerhouse well that's the point they're used to it at Jamaica College they have won so many trophies they are the defending champions and they would have looked on the students and seen that their team was already leading three goals to nil after the first leg. So, yeah, blessed with quality performances here at the school. So, so yeah, no surprise there for me. There are actually more Jamaica College youngsters watching the first match than the second match. That might have been a surprise between Jonathan Grant and Mona probably looking at their opposition or their possible future opposition in Mona High. And then seeing for themselves, you know, what they will have to do against them. That's the mindset now at JC. It's the, seeing who is going to come next. I think they've already figured that this is a done deal and it is at a 5 nil aggregate. Hopefully for Elsom they can, as it's a safe face in the second half, maybe a consolation goal or, or two to make it look a little bit more respectable but yeah they're not going to erase a five goal deficit Jamaica College still being very ball dominant. Only once this season have Eltham scored more than five goals and it came against Greater Port Moore, a 12 nil win. They do wear wear blue, but that's the only thing about common <laughs> with Jamaica College. Sayers on the ball for Jamaica College. Finds John. John gets the rebound. Mills gets by one. Still Mills. King. Timely challenge that to avert danger. 
Sterling doing well to strip possession from Linton, who was looking to cause some menace for Jamaica College. Here's Lawrence. King gets it across. Jay Johnson not there to finish. St. George's against St. Jago just starting back. St. Jago trailing by two goals to nil. A Brian Burkett double for St. George's. Now has 18 goals on the season, Brian Burkett. And at the top of the charts is Burkett, and there's a, a whistle on the plate. 18 goals to go with 11 assists. Another top season for the St. George's number 10. to be Daniel Reed down for Eltham. Did get that knock to the head from the shot that he headed away. They've made three changes, Eltham, in this the second half. Let's see if those changes can produce any great transformation in their fortunes. Of course, even getting a goal back would do well for an, another season, yeah? Knowing that they would have scored against the defending champions, even though they were out of the competition, yeah? Had got an... Yeah, yeah. Had got an update earlier, by the way, that McGrath were leading William Nib by three goals to one, but it seems like that was a mistake. And further reports have shown that at half time it was actually nil all. So I'm not sure about that reporting of the 3 1 lead. Maybe hopeful from a McGrath perspective, but it is nil all between McGrath and William Nib. Both really need to get a, a full three points from this one. Uh, McGraw, of course, they would have drawn with Dintel in their first match. William, William would have lost. To Christiana, yeah. 3-2. Christiana showing some quality that, yeah, we are not necessarily used to, especially in the De Costa Cup from them. Yeah, the parish of Manchester have done well this year. They got three teams into the round of 16. Manchester, who have been the standard bearers, Mile Gully, and Cristiano. Yeah, dude looks like do really does really look like an uphill task for Mile Gully in terms of getting out of that group. As such a strong group, Clarendon College, Cornwall College, and Saint Elizabeth Technical. Uh, I'm not sure Mile Gully will navigate themselves out, way out of that group, but Cristiano, a really good opportunity to come out of theirs, and well. Manchester with work to do because they do trail in this current game, but they would be looking at that zone, Manchester, and thinking that they should be coming out in the top two. And if not, it, that's a wasted opportunity for them this season. Again. So, further dismay for Manchester. News coming in is that BB Coke have scored a fourth goal, so they now lead 4 2 over Manchester, do BB Coke and are on their way to two victories from two matches. Wow, and to the top of the group as well. Of course, they would have been second in their preliminary round. Yeah, I think group. with a second win, until uh, BB Coke will certainly have confirmed their movement. To the quarterfinals, quarter yeah. finals. Two wins from two, six points. Manchester would have won their game earlier. So, yeah. And BB Coke had beat Happy Grove, so we awaited that match between Happy Grove and. I think it's tacky. I think that tacky. was put off 
for tomorrow based on the weather conditions, especially in the eastern end of the island. Coast teams yet to get off the mark in terms of points. Manchester certainly would be favored as they face off with should be happy Grove. Yeah. Happy Grove from the parish of Portman. Taki from St. Mary. As they say, good to see these parishes transitioning into the later rounds of the Da Costa Cup. Never seen a, a Da Costa Cup winner from any of the eastern parishes in Thomas, St. Mary or Portland. In fact, we haven't seen any from, from St. Andor or, or Trelawney, Trelawney either. either. Yeah. Hit a run. Well. It's a goal for Akeem Thompson. He's down. There's a whistle, though. Yeah. Not sure if it was a foul. Need some confirmation. Still waiting to see whether it's a goal or not. But well, we did spoke, speak about Eltham getting back into this game, getting at least a consolation. Turning over at a 5 nil score aggregate is improbable, but let's see. Ooh, the header on. It was Javon Grant, yeah. yeah. If he's finish. onside, it's a goal. I, can't, I don't think there was a flag from the assistant. Yeah, didn't see any. And if so, it will be Grant's fifth of the season. It is a goal, isn't it? Eltham right back in it on the day 2-1 they trail now some measure of consolation for them let's see how they can drive forward for the rest of this encounter it's Lawrence for Jamaica College Here's John for Jamaica College. Dennis tries to bring it across. Amari King responds. Offside there. Here's Eltham. So still nil all between Froome and Agava Maceo. Nil all between William Nip and McGrath. Here's Lawrence for Jamaica College, finds John, his control, poor, they give up possession. Here's Eltham, that ball breaks for Keem. Thompson there, but that's broken up since. It's Chabari Howell now, lifting it to King. King, his control, not as pristine as perhaps they would have liked. Dennis now on the ball for Jamaica College. King, they're looking for the call, but referee says play on. And again, Altham just happy to punt it upfield. Here's Altham once more. The substitutes, they really have come on and made a difference. Keem Thompson, Kemar Williams, two of the substitutes. Sayers plays that one on field. King able to capitalize after the goal scorer. Grant was unable to put it out of touch or clear it effectively. Wet underfoot conditions not favoring the players as they would have been used to, I'm sure. 
Here's the ball in, but that's charged down. So updates coming in from the Manning Cup. St. Catherine still continue to lead Wolmers by two goals to nil, four nil on aggregate. Heidel now leading Excelsior by three goals to nil. Big result for Heidel. St. Andrew Technical and Kingston Technical locked at nil all in first half action. And Haley Selassie and Tivoli still at nil all. Nil all and aggregate as well. Starts with the advantage in that matchup over Kingston Technical. You had a four goal, four, four goal advantage yeah. here. And Heidel, first leg ending nil all with Excelsior. Now with a three goal thrust. Sterling plays it out wide to Lawrence. To hear Lawrence get in by the substitute Williams. Here's Jaden on the shot, but that was always going wide of the mark. Jaden Johnson. Cornwall College continued as we see the shot there. Well, wide in the end. Cornwall College continued to lead Mile Gully by a goal to nil. Boy, Mile Gully have proven a, a, a difficult team to break down in this round of 16, even though they haven't come away with any points. 2 0 against Clarendon College. Admirable based on how Clarendon College have demolished most of the teams they've played. Here's King. The Marley King goes for the shot. Spilled. Aitchison unable to hold on to it. Still pressure for Jamaica College with John. Sh fired wide off the mark did John. Of course, when you compare the teams from Jamaica College last year to this year, a lot of star power they had last year. Simon is, of course, being mo most notable. That's a strike from distance, converted. There's some star power. Howell there with the strike from outside of the area. Aitchison unable to handle it. Jabari Howell picking up an assist for the first goal. Now he has a goal of his own. His fourth of the season, Jabari Howell. And this one in the 61st minute. Jamaica College continued their dominance. Some strike, but Aitchison has got to do better there. He was falling even before the ball got to him, Aitchison. And yeah, weak attempt from the Eltham goalkeeper. He'll be disappointed with that. And JC add the gap back to the scoreline. Here's Jamaica College again. Chan finds Jones. That shot better handled by the keeper.
Lawrence. So more action, more results from the De Costa Cup, or more updates rather. As we look at that attempted shot from Jaden Johnson, weak in the end. Garvey must here taking the lead ahead of Froome, goal to nil. Tintil, opening scoring against Christiana, goal to nil as well. You have them trying to play out of their own half. Download the Sportsmax app today. Get it on the Google Play or the Apple App Store. Follow all the action in schoolboy football. All the action on schoolboy football is free on Sportsmax Plus. That's only on the app Sportsmax Plus. Because there's so many other sporting options that you can feast your eyes on. Of course, you have a Champions League. WTA Tennis golf horse racing it's all on the app and yeah you can see jamaica college advancing on the app too as they come forward Muffed shot from dennis still up in the air clark gets the header up whistle as a jamaica college player down on the park marley king Big results coming in there, as you mentioned, Dean, because Gavi must here with the lead. They would have drawn their first match against Glenmuir. So, in need of three points, Glenmuir as well. But Glenmuir leading Port Antonio by four goals to nil. So, they're doing their goal difference a lot of justice. And in that group, it could very well come down to that kind of scenario because Frome as well in that group. So it's a, it's a very difficult group. From leading as well by a goal to nil. So yeah. Well, sorry, From is trailing actually. I meant to say, but yeah. That group is going to be a, a quite a tight one, and could very well come down to goal difference in terms of determining the first two teams through. So just to give confirmation of the makeup of the different groupings in the De Costa Cup round of 16, Clarendon College, Mile Gully, Cornwall College, Stets in one group, that's group one, Manchester High, Tacky High, Dintil, and McGrath in another group, William Nip, Christiana, Happy Grove, and BB Cope. Let me, no, let, 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 let's go over that once more. I think I may have lost my bearing somewhat there. Substitution for Jamaica College. Isaiah Stibel coming in for Carlton Brown. I'm not sure if it's Carlton Brown unless we've seen two in the afternoon. <laughs> it's probably Tyree Jones who is coming on for their number five. Yeah. Jamoy Dennis actually the man replaced their number 20. So, yeah, group three, as I was mentioning earlier, Dintil, William Nip, Christiana McGraw, group two, Manchester, Happy Group, BB Coke, Kentucky, and group four, Port Antonio, Gavamasio, Glenmuir, and Froome. So the matchups on hand, as we are seeing unfold, of course, only one of those matchups between Taki and Happy Grove being pushed back to tomorrow based on weather conditions. 
and St. Elizabeth Technical and Clarendon College will be a later start. In, sh in fact, it should be getting underway. It should have just gotten underway. It was a 4.30 start, wasn't it? Yeah. That, of course, on the Sportsmax YouTube page. John on the end of this one it was a good challenge. The follow up that was saved and still, oh, that's wasted. King really should have done better there from point blank range. John did the hard work. That shot from Johnson was saved. Kind that one open the scoring did King for Jamaica College in the first half. Being called off for all his troubles. Yeah, JC Ring in the change is no surprise here. This ma this this tie is, is close for them in terms of going through. They lead six one on aggregate. And we're just about twenty minutes to go or so. Chances for other players. Giovanni Taylor being brought on. Seven goals on the season for Taylor, so fully utilizing their squad. Taylor would have started many of the games for them. Deep squad, JC. So, as I say, opportunities for other players. When you come down to the critical parts of the season, you're going to need that depth of squad. And you, you don't want to be introducing players for the first time in the season. You want them to have already been used to the atmosphere, the forum. And to already have confidence in themselves, goals, assists behind their name or whatever. Sterling on the ball, being hounded by Headley. Keeping the possession is Jamaica College. The blue half of North Street have managed to Score again against St. Diego, 3-0 now for St. George's, 5-0 on aggregate. Haven't won a Manning Cup since 2012, St. George's. They'll be through to the quarter-final round as well. And yeah, St. Diego's season will be at, at an end. St. Catherine continue to lead Woolmers by three goals to nil. So Jerome Waite and company, they'll be heading out as well at Woolmers. Not necessarily the strongest Woolmers team we've seen, but yeah. Here's John, finds Lawrence. Mills. Two big coaches in in that matchup as well. And Anthony Patrick has been around a long time, won titles at this level, and then Jerome Wade as well. Charlie Smith, hero as well at all kind of levels. Anthony Patrick as well as coach at club level as well as schoolboy level. But yeah, Patrick is still the coach at St. Catherine High. And he has done the number over Jerome Wade. Five on aggregate. They'll be heading through as well, St. Catherine. Could work by Jones there. Can Lawrence keep it in? He can. Lifts it across. Handled well by Reed and company. But it comes to Mills. His turn blocked. Here's Eltham.
seems as if he was playing the advantage, the referee. Yeah, but Sterling should get a yellow card there, Malachi Sterling. No intention to play the ball, just wanted to ensure that the Eltham attacker couldn't get on any further, and I hope that's not missed. Yeah, he's got, he's got to be booked for that. Sterling, one of those players, coming for, look at that. Ah, that was very cynical. Yeah. I, I can't believe he's getting away with it, though. That's, that's got to be a yellow card. Sterling, actually a product of Woolmer's boys as well. Did spend some time there before coming across to Jamaica College. Lucky to get away with that. So a substitute being substituted, Akeem Thompson coming off. As we mentioned during weight, he was an individual who was willing to make such Tough decision, substitute to substitute during his time at Arnold Gardens. Spirit no punches when he mentioned it as well on the air. Said if you embarrass me as a substitute, I'll embarrass you. Perhaps he has toned down now. Who knows? Another coach renowned for that was Jeffrey Maxwell. Known to substitute the substitutes. <laughs> and he had the same kind of comment like Jerome. Taskmasters, both of them. And both quite successful as well. Sterling and Sayers there, but that play broken up. Way offside was Steve Bull. I haven't seen much of him today, Bull. 12 goals, leading goal scorer for Eltham. They're number 11. But yeah, he has been made to work off of scraps for the most part and an occasional shot from distance. His team has been doing a lot of defending. No passer for him. Here's John. Gets by one. Releases Taylor. Taylor with the shot. Gets the rebound. National under 50 representative Giovanni Taylor. Here's Eltham. Unable to keep it in play was Kemar Williams. Taylor was the intended target, but well read by the Elton defense. Sayers finds to hear Lawrence. Dylan John. Taylor now. Taylor with the shot. Weak in the end. Marcus Anderson, the substitute. Here's Taylor once more. Handled by Aitchison. Yeah, 
JC. 32 attempts on goal. Eltham only having two. Nine shots on target. Of course, Eltham having one. Here's Eltham with Williams, a substitute. Finds Clark. Build up play here from Eltham. Anderson. Unable to really get it up. Gets a corner kick, does the substitute, Marcus Anderson. Lifting it across. Clark. Sure, he had better options than Clark. Dylan John. Doing a bit of keepy uppy. Sears switches the play. Cut out by Clark. John gets by one. Howell Jones. So Woolman's getting a consolation goal, but the full-time score reads St. Catherine three, Woolman's one. Garvin Massey also confirming their victory ahead of Froome Technical, the goal to nil. Cornwall College now leading Malgoli two goals to nil. Yeah, they've added another one, haven't they? The 12-time champions. And so they look like they'll be heading to their first victory of the round of 16. So Catherine threw 5-1 an aggregate then over Wolmers. And what a big three points that is for Garvey Moseo with that 1-0 win. So they now move to four points from two matches. From three points from two matches, and Glenmuir look as if they're heading to four points from two matches as well, but they have a superior goal, to goal difference. Yeah. They currently lead 4 0, that game still active. That's a big win over Port Antonio, who have proved very stubborn throughout the course of the season. They played a good match against Frome. Does it make a college? It's clear that Taylor really wants a goal coming off the bench and he's been eager. So he has taken about four or five shots already since coming on Taylor and busy in the 18 yard. Can't really find the, could I say, the finesse yet to make it his own. Taylor doing well to flick that out one. Intended target seemed to have been Jabari Garrick. Here's Tybel. Good header out. Taylor on the end of it. 
gets the return ball, turns, shoots. It's wide. Eight for effort for Giovanni Taylor. Done. Certainly looking very purposeful is Giovanni Taylor. wins the ball for Eltham. They have looked much better, Eltham, in the second half. Williams, though, not justifying my earlier comment. John Taylor time for the sports max app moment brought to you by the sports max app came courtesy of this wonderful builder play Dylan John with a lovely lobby ball to Jabari Howell laying it on a platter for Marley King crying home in the first half that was 1-0 for Jamaica College yeah, that's a Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. Get all the action of Is a Schoolboy Football on the app for free on Sportsmax Plus, plus a slew of other sporting activities downloaded on the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store. The Marley King there, the man for the Sportsmax app moment. He have been taken off since King. That was his seventh goal of the season. And quite a few players doing well. This man, to me, has been the best player on the park, though. Phil and John. Phil and yeah. John. Oh, wow. Really has come of age as a, as a midfielder. That's not the best pass. So that's not a great illustration of how well he's played. But I, I tell you what, they have a habit of jinxing what we say about them just as they get the ball. <laughs> I'm telling you. Has been a part of this unit for some time now. But he's certainly come of age. And he controls the middle of the park. Has great vision about him. Good touch. Doesn't have any out and out assists or goals today, but he's definitely been the best player for JC. Yeah, Dylan John definitely showing his quality. Of course, when you look on the other players, of course, he would have definitely shone above them. Yeah. For his out and out play today. Howell, Howell did end up with an assist and scored eventually, Howell. Um, they're, they're number 12. But when you look over the course of 90 minutes, I guess if you're just going off statistics and not watching the game, you say, "Oh wow, how will a goal and assist?" But yeah. For the for majority of the game, he's been a uh, you know he's just been there. Yeah. Dylan John, both from a defensive perspective and going forward, has been right there in the thick of things, especially going forward. And he's who has really cut this Eltham team apart with his timed passing. He is their leading goal scorer on the season with 14. In fact, he's in the top five in the Manning Cup as well in terms of goal scoring. Dylan John. That's how they're being bullied off the ball by Stephen Bull.
O'Connell College have recorded their first victory of the round of 16, a 2 0 win over Mile Gullet. It's full time there now. Big three points for Cornwall College. That will be a very tough group. Clarendon College and Stitz have got underway. It's nil all in the first half. Both teams coming off of a victories. Here's John. Did well to take it down first time. Gets by one. Did really well to try to get that across. <laughs> Would have been majestic, yeah. If it had not been intercepted by the Elton defense. Thought he was going to go for the left footed shot at first and then just froze the play. Almost getting it done and then Mills with the shot. Mills, another one of those players who came from York Castle and Mount Pleasant. Both Mills and Jones, two of the four man defense line of JC. Handled by Aitchison in goal. Stival. Intercepted by the goal scorer Grant. Ferran there. Gets the call from the referee. Garrick there was waiting for the call, didn't get it and recognized well. Eventually he gets it. Deliver from Stiebel. To resume play. Confirmation of that victory for Heidel over Excelsior. Three goals to nil. Make that three goals to one. Excelsior pulling one back. Of course, the teams who lose in the round of 16 in the Manning Cup play the first round of the Walker Cup and they'll be joined by four teams who failed to qualify from the quarterfinal groupings in the second round of the Water Cup those winning teams yep and that's So the second of three minutes added on. We're in that now. There's John. Lifts it across. Spibel was trying to get on the end of it. Made a meal of it in the end. Three 
So William Nib and McGrath and in one all. Nil all rather. Nil all between those two teams. So McGrath now on two points. William Nib on one. Dintil on three. Well make that four. four yeah. Yeah. Dintil with a draw and a win. Yeah, so Dintel four, Christiana three, McGrath, McGrath two, <laughs> William, and William one. Nim one. Well, still all to play for then in that group. Certainly. I guess William Nib will be happy at that, considering they're at the tail end of the group and the highest, um, the, the leader in the group is just three points away from them. From our Francis has seen enough in this one. Jamaica College beating Eltham three goals to one, six one in aggregate, confirming their place in the quarterfinal. Cynical smile there from Davian Ferguson. And uh, what has been a routine matchup based on the performance completed for Jamaica College on their home turf three goals to one they are through to the quarterfinals at Jamaica College Romeo Francis sent things off Jamaica College looking sprightly that header well that missed header from Jaden Johnson showing their prowess and John is trying to get that one into the back of the net cleared by Clark in the heart of the defense they had a shot that went over the goal of Raul Renton was happy to see that go over and that was from the eventual goal scorer Grant another one handled by Renton in goal for Jamaica College Jones would strike but that was wide breakthrough would come courtesy of the build-up play orchestrated by Dilla John the man of the match releasing Jabari Howell who then laid it on a platter for Amarley King getting his seventh goal of the season Amarley King the number nine for Jamaica College from point-blank range had a good finish HSN in goal didn't have a chance against that one 1-0 one 4-0 on aggregate at the time the pressure would continue through Dennis he fired that was saved but not saved effectively Jaden Johnson on hand to get the follow-up and just tap it home was the most convincing of tap-ins but it was enough to get the job done on the afternoon Jaden Johnson there getting another goal this season that was off the post from Johnson was looking to get more but they would get one back Eltham Chavon Grant there in the midst of pain you hear the anguish there getting the touch Raul Renton unable to hold the clean sheet for Jamaica College Jamaica College though had more to come in the way of attempts on goal John, of course, being the main architect behind many of them. And here they'd get a third goal. That shot from Jabari Howell wasn't the most powerful of shots, but the goalkeeper was moving away from it. And his hands weak and wet on the afternoon. So an assist and a goal for Jabari Howell. Could challenge that blocking the danger good save 
on that follow up and Amarley King went way high off the mark Giovanni Taylor the substitute had some attempts that one was saved had another one that was weak he really tried Giovanni Taylor but that was all from Mario Francis song for today Jamaica College 3-1 winners they are 10 shots on target from 35 attempts yeah they need a lot more accuracy Eltham they had one on target from two attempts eight fouls five for Eltham no yellow cards no red cards two offsides for Jamaica College only one for Eltham both teams had one corner and of course Joshua Aitchison goal had six saves 80% of the possession with three goals to one Jamaica College confirmed their place in the quarterfinal of the Manning Cup Jenny has the man of the match And here we have the Digicel Man of the Match, none other than Dylan John, presented by the Digicel Junior Brand Manager, Kadeen Webley. Dylan, great performance today. This is your third season in the Manning Cup. You are 17, very young. What are you looking forward to this season? Um, we just want to go to the finals, you know, always want to bring home the trophy. That's the main goal. In the quarterfinals, you may play teams like St. George's College. <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Do you think that your team is ready? You know, we have no fear. No matter who, who comes, you know, anyone comes, we try our best, do our 100%, get the job done. And do you think that Jamaica College can win the treble this year? We'll make the football talk. All right, boss. <laughs> and now we have the assistant coach for Eltham High. Coach, not the result you would have wanted today, but in my opinion, your boys put up a fight. Assess their, assess their performance for me. Well, the truth is, um, Eltham has nothing to be, be shame of, right? Um, playing different champions here, yeah? it will be a tough one, and I think the guys did their best, and I'm super proud of them today. Well, seeing you and your coaching staff on the sideline, you guys were very animated and vocal. What more would you have wanted from your boys? A bit more maturity, you know? And um, it's a very young bunch, and I think in time, you know, they will represent Eltham very, very well. Well, your program has surely improved, but as your season comes to an end, what will you be focusing on for the future development? Um, this, as I said before, these guys are very young, you know, they're under 15 years old. So uh, um, the program will continue next year, and I hope that they get more mature, more disciplined, and we will represent. Okay, thank you, Coach. Yeah. And now we welcome the head coach of Jamaica College. Coach, 6-1 on aggregate, your boys played very well today. From their, from their performance, is there anything you would want them to improve on? Um, I think we are somewhat disappointed in, in conceding that goal. Um, we set ourselves a record that we never wanted to, to give up that goal, especially here today. But I think overall we played well. Um, credit must be given to Eltham. I think they came here today with a very good plan. Um, it's hard when they're being man-marked all over the pitch and I think they stuck to their stars but I think our boys in the end really they really be patient and we, we got the goals and kudos to them Well, the quarterfinals is in near sight and the competition will get tougher with the possibility of playing teams like Heidel or St. George's How will you be working with the minds of your boys? In the minds of your boys? To be honest, I don't think about the quarterfinals yet um, My job right now is to See how between today and tomorrow we can get these boys recover. I think the turnaround time is, is extremely short, so we'll go again on Saturday. So it's just to get them ready physically and mentally for that one. And from you, I'm sure that you would want to or are looking to retain some silverware, but do you and your boys have the eye on the treble this year? Um, we only have our eyes on just trying to, to be better than we were yesterday. Um, that's how we, we focus. We're a very humble group and we try to quietly go about our business instead of talking and let the football do the talking. Well, thank you, Coach. All the best. No problem. So, yeah, here are the lineups so far in the quarterfinal of the Manning Cup. St. Catherine confirmed, Casey confirmed, Mona confirmed, St. Andrew Technical and Kingston Technical. Of course, that game was nil all at the time uh, we saw, but 4-0 in favour of St. Andrew Technical. So, they 
pretty much confirmed. Jamaica College in Group 2, St. George's College, Haile Selassie and Tivoli Gardens in the late kickoff at the Stadium East and Heidel confirmed. So all to play for between Haile Selassie and Tivoli Gardens and that's Group 2 of the Manning Cup quarterfinals. So there's more football coming your way Saturday 2.30 p.m. 3.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. The Costa Cup, Sportsmax and Sportsmax Plus, Dintel Technical versus William Nib. Still all to play for in that group. SSFL Premiership on Sportsmax and Scene TV, St. Anthony, Anthony's College versus Naparima College, Friday, 2.30 p.m., 3.30 in Trinidad and the rest of the Caribbean. Confirmation of the full-time scores, Jamaica College 3, Eltham High 1. Jamaica College confirming their place in the quarterfinal of the Manning Cup. The action continues. November is the month of decisions. Yo, Issa, my schoolboy football look this season. People am ready, you know. All right, then, pick up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. See what the champions cup, Ben Francis, what the cup, which team I win the championship this season. Yo, it's a bomb and dive at school, I go finish the league and beat her. With you, I go collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a messy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for a vehicle. Looking at the crowd, both loan and support us from school and community. People not finna distance, some are listening to prayer, they must have a bunch of fun TV too. Country and turn your night, be one reason. He's a schoolboy football, good cup, look one, look all. Which team are the best of 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 that competition I never have been nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to school from far and them love it with peaceful and the youths now. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I still people are but member which party start. It's a school boy football. Run, come, 